First of all, I thank the Almighty God for bringing us together, bringing the officials from the mainland, then the northeastern states, to this place, safe and sound, to have this uh, four-day regional workshop on a study of school assessment and examination practices and equivalence of boards. It gives me a great, great pleasure in welcoming all of you to this inaugural program. Respected honorable advisor, it is an honor to have you, your presence in our midst this morning. I extend a warm welcome to you and express our sincere gratitude for taking time out from your busy schedule to address us this morning. Sir, your presence is an encouragement to all of us. We are pleased to have the experts, resource persons from the NCAT for the workshop. The best practices and the ideas you share will prepare the Northeastern State Boards to get into inside the objectives of PARA and as we share our experiences of the school assessment and examination practices of various boards, it will help us to know our strength and weaknesses and adopt the best practices to align ourselves with the recommendations of the NEP 2020. I take this opportunity to extend a warm welcome to all the representatives of the sister boards, CISCE and NOS officials. Uh, Northeastern states are beautiful places, but it takes time and efforts <coughs> to visit places uh, in this part of the country. Yesterday also, uh, because of the landslide in the uh, Parkai range, some of the some of our uh, guests they had to come through the uh, long route. I'm sorry for the inconveniences that you had to go through. Welcome all the senior officials from sister departments and media persons. I would like to take this time to express our sincere thanks to the NCAT for giving us the opportunity to host this uh, four-day regional workshop. After a very long time, the Northeastern State Boards are being brought together through this platform. As and research in the NEP 2020, set, setting up of National Assessment Center, performance assessment, review, and analysis of knowledge for holistic development, Parag, as a standard setting body with the basic objective of setting norms, standards, and guidelines for students, assessment, and evaluation for all the recognized school boards of the country. It's timely, and I feel that this will help the boards to share their best practices to ensure equivalence of academic standards among learners across all the school boards. Conduct of examination is not due to the boards. With the NEP 2020, now the focus of assessment is shifted to competency-based testing, testing of the core concepts and knowledge, higher order thinking skills and its applications in real life situation, moving away from raw memory. How do we do the assessment? It's going to determine the classroom teaching in our schools. I believe as uh, examination boards, we are all concerned that whatever we certify, we maintain a good standard and then the certification that we do, it's, uh, it's uh, valid and it has its credibility. And with the NDP 2020 recommendations, I feel that there are challenges ahead of us. But I'm sure together with all the stakeholders, we can bring about positive changes in our assessment practices and make examination 
more relevant, credible for our learners. I'm sure after this workshop, the participants will be enriched with the best practices of various boards. I know during the next four days, the sessions will be long, but I'm sure it will be meaningful learning experiences, meaningful learning experience for everyone. Once again, I welcome each and everyone to this workshop and evaluation uh, and assessment. Thank you.
So far, we have 10 trays, both in classes, secondary and higher secondary level. These are the trees that we have introduced so far. <coughs> Inclusive education. In, two, in March 2022, we have revised our rules, allow, uh, giving provisions to special children with special needs. These are some of the provisions that, that are given to our CWSN students, exemption of examination fee, special arrangement of rules, scribes, extra time, third language exemption. At secondary level, we also have given uh, subject options, English being a compulsory subject. They can choose any other four subjects, which means they can, some of the students, uh, if they doesn't want to or for mathematics that also is provision also is given. Uh, including the whole year that is from 1975 till date. Finally, uh, we are fortunate to be a part of the Nectar project, now enhancing classroom teaching and resources, which is a World Bank project. Under this, we have this component, and we examine these in the forms. The study of the existing system has already been done by the EI, that is an, an agency, educational initiative agency. And we are looking forward for inboarding of the second agency so that the recommendations of the first. Uh, Many stakeholders. Earlier, we used to wonder that. Uh, Examination is for the students only. But today, if you see, uh, particularly for class 10 and 12, whenever a student in a family is in class 10, we stop going to all cultural events, get together, and all other personal pursuits. Even then, many events are being held only on Sundays, so the children's studies are not held. The social family, entire the school education, education school today has become a major social factor. It affects the um, uh, social life of every family in which a student is studying class 10 or 12. And education assessment is also has become uh, an important industry also. You will find companies which are supporting students to prepare for their examinations, be it class 10 or class 12 or for the admission to the higher education institutions, it has become a multi-crore business today. You will find companies are stock registering themselves with the National Stock Exchange Group, such as the economic value of education assessment in India, not only India, even other parts of the world. You also found that the ones who are teaching in schools you see many uh, schools in private sector or in public sector. The salaries of the teacher ranges from say about 10,000 to say 30,000, 40,000 rupees, or at best 50, 60,000 rupees. Whereas the children for whom the stake is very high and the coaching classes pay the salaries to the level of say 4 lakhs, 5 lakhs, or the salaries equivalent to a managers of the multinational companies. Such is the work, such is the way the education assessment is going today in India. Again, keep going on the way the education assessment is impacting our life today. There are many things going on. In this context, is it necessary for the boards to upgrade, to rise above this level, understanding the aspirations of the society? That's how I see the, 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 the relevance of the um, board today. Is it possible for all of us to understand each other that we stand together? To help the society to meet its own, its own aspirations, to upgrade ourselves so that children learn better and are assessed better. It is in this context the National Education Policy 2020 came into being and it is in this context 
as a follow-up of the recommendations of the National Education Policy, the PARAC, the National Assessment Center, has been established in NCRD. So the PARAC has started functioning, and we are, we are all wondering where to start, how to start. And then we thought that understanding each other, each one of us who have been working with, there are some boards which may be about 100 year old, or some boards which are very, very new, like the way Sikkim uh, Board of Open School. So, uh, and there are some boards which are affiliate, which are established by an act of a legislature, or um, there are some boards which were just by the rules of the government, the, ru <coughs> the rules and regulations of the government that both came into being. So, such a complexity exists in the functioning of the 60 boards in India, around 60 plus boards in India. So we need to understand the way the boards are functioning, how the schools affiliated to those boards are functioning. So once we understand, then we may be able to uh, see the challenges that we are facing and then address those challenges as per the vision of the national education policy. For this purpose, we are all sitting here today. The curriculum, particularly the syllabus and textbooks. But whether the boards took cognizance of this change in the uh, establishment of some system of national system of education. A study conducted in say 2010 says that the up to classes 1 and 1 to 8, there is a kind of national system of education. For example, if you see in which class constitution is introduced to the children, you will see a national uh, understanding. Yes, constitution is introduced to the children in a better manner in class 8. Where the local panchayat is introduced in classes, you will find in most states they are introduced in class 6. You will find French Revolution is introduced in class 9 and 10. So such a national system of education, not only in social sciences, sciences, mathematics, they, it started already evolving. In the same way, the boards also take into cognizance of this national system of education. And uh, engulfing all these national systems and also address the local context, we need to understand each other. In the midst of uh, professional people, uh, the country grows and we are all there. And this is where I also take this opportunity to share a piece of my mind. Uh, Chairperson, I think the invocation by the academic officer, Mr. Uh, Bolie, uh, you will come out, Mr. Uh, Jose. Uh, in our midst, we have given a brief introduction of uh, NBSC. NBSC, uh, uh, Ili Hing, he has not given uh, this thing, but uh, we were there under Assam Board. Uh, prior to our statehood, we were one of the first few states which uh, actually got lots of independence uh, to frame our educational policy. So, uh, NBSC was formed in uh, 1974, it has been functioning, and uh, I think uh, in terms of best practices, we have come a long way. Uh, in place of Professor Indani Baduri, uh, Professor M. V. Srinivasan, thank you so much for uh, briefly giving us an idea about uh, delegates from Northeast, uh, from Mizoram, Meghalaya, Sikkim, Tripura. I will not go into the details. We also have uh, partnering uh, uh, representatives from the ETS, United States of America. Then we have the National Board, two are represented here, the ICSE and IOS. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, it's a brief respite from the heat of Delhi. So welcome to Bahima. It's a hamlet uh, town, a very small town. Uh, so please enjoy your stay here also. Uh, I also uh, thank the media for making their presence here. Uh, we all know that we belong to a community which gives certificates to people. You see? We are people who constantly break people. So I know uh, we have a long day ahead, not only just a uh, uh, long day ahead, uh, but uh, four days. Parag was formed, and I uh, confer with uh, Professor Srinivasan. Uh, he told me that uh, it is now full, fully functional. Uh, the performance assessment, review, and analysis of knowledge for holistic development. Uh, a lot of structural reform is taking place currently, uh, even under the state. So, especially with the NEP, uh, we hope that India has been a civilizational experience of so many centuries. Uh, I used to study. Uh, not just Shastra, see? Uh, so, uh, not just with uh, psychometrics, but also in other sectors, and we know that uh, especially vocationalization of education is one of the key components uh, 
especially with this NP. So this is something which uh, I also want our uh, professors to take note. Uh, India is a diverse country for us, a small, uh, uh, 80 years ago we were just simply head hunting. Mm? Uh, <clears throat> Uh, for us, as a small state, I think we have come a long way. So I'd like to speak briefly from the Nagaland Naga perspective. Uh, we have come a long way because uh, in terms of uh, NBSC, we have created uh, examination centers. And you know, we have not just teaching our young boys and girls, conducting exams, but we have topographical challenges like uh, the interior places, how do we conduct? So it's not just with the assessment, we are also faced with a lot of uh, structural challenges. So I think uh, this are NBSC over the years has also formed its own mechanism, the clearing house mechanism, uh, it's very effective. And we see in popular Hindi movies, uh, people talking about uh, mass copying this and that. And I think uh, Nagaland, we are proud to say that uh, we have very effectively, and also it also ties with our, what we call, uh, our community sense, uh, 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 mass copying, this are something which uh, inherently, I mean, as a society, we do not really encourage. So I think uh, all these best practices uh, are something which we can do better. So from the Naga perspective, it is a huge challenge to say that we can learn something from Nagas. Because India, given its diversity, you have like uh, 2,000 plus years of civilization. And it's not just India, but we have been exporting our what we call, uh, uh, education, not just education vis-a-vis uh, religion also, uh, to our neighboring uh, countries. So today, if you look at uh, India, thanks to the NCRT, uh, last month I attended the 58th NCRT uh, general uh, meeting. I highlighted there also uh, NCRT as what we call uh, the parent body, it has been fostering a lot of growth. And uh, if you look at uh, the overall India, uh, we see that many of our teachers who are in the uh, education field, they all go through a very rigorous or robust system. Our teachers are very qualified. So if we vis-a-vis -vis compare ourselves as, uh, 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 what do we call, uh, a global partner, I think uh, we have a long way to go, I think in terms of uh, comparing with uh, uh, developing countries. I think India as a global leader in uh, what do we call uh, in education sector, we have a robust system, and I think this is one area where NCRT should have its global footprints all over the world. Take the instance of what do we call Brazil as a developing country; they are still struggling with uh, uh, what do we call uh, educating their uh, what do we call qualifying their teachers to teach in the classroom. So I think India has thanks to our national uh, institutions, we have gone a long way. So this. Kindest act of coming to Kohima, calling all the regional partners, uh, our sister organizations, gathering us here in Kohima, this kind act, I would like to congratulate the NCRT for taking this initiative. We are in the far flung, uh, we are in the easternmost, but thanks to all of you, you have taken your time out to come and actually be with us. So with that, uh, I welcome all of you. It's a long way to go, but we also hope that you will also learn from us. Just three quick points. First is the NEP, especially for a multi-diverse linguistic uh, state like Nagaland. It becomes a little bit impossible for us to identify which language, especially in urban areas. So if it is in the village, of course we can stick with the local language. We have like uh, more than uh, 20 plus linguistic uh, categories here. Uh, if you go to the interiors, it's much more. But this is one challenge where uh, we are facing. <coughs> The second one is, I highlighted during the 58th uh, NCR meeting also. Uh, we know that India has been exporting its education. We have been very liberal uh, uh, from very far countries uh, during the uh, what we call ancient times. People come and we freely give our what we call knowledge systems to other people. Likewise, uh, many states in India are in no position to actually saw uh, our uh, Professor Serena Barton has already spoken uh, highlighted. Uh, it becomes difficult for us to conform. So likewise, we have been taking the NCRT textbooks. So uh, we have been asking whether we can liberalize a little bit. There is a lot of doorkeepers in the form of distributor. So if we can have an open access policy, where state can mobilize its resources to print, you see, because education should be free, and especially today here we are talking about access and uh, I think India as a very liberal-minded country, NCRT particularly, should be more 
open to that idea of so to share knowledge. Lastly, when it comes to vocationalization, you see we have a list of uh, 10. Vocationalization is something which uh, structurally the state our school is also struggling because uh, it also uh, 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 imply uh, putting up teachers now. It has expenditures on the state. Uh, we will have to reconfigure it. Uh, earlier we were thinking we will drop some of those, but now we are in the process of restructuring to meet the uh, needs of national education policy. So when it comes to diversity of, uh, for example, Parag has come out with uh, what it will market linkages with the uh, unified laboratory network. So likewise, we have not introduced, but simple things like packaging, which we can teach, like uh, how do we export our things to the rest of the country. We should test our pineapples one of these days, I'm sure. They are making arrangements, the sweetest pineapples uh, all over India, you can find here. So things like uh, market linkages to do with livelihood, we would like to. And also we have, what do we call, uh, 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 indigenous practices like, uh, what do we call, uh, uh, use of cane, cane works, you see, a uh, neat team. So we would like to, so I would also like to request and also ask the uh, uh, people here, uh, you are all masters in the home field, to also take cognizance of that uh, there is diversity of uh, vocationalization. So we will appreciate if you can also take note of that. With this, I will come each and every one of you. You have a great time. Thank you. In the midst of uh, professional people, uh, the country grows and we are all there. This is where I also take this opportunity to share a piece of my mind. Uh, Chairperson, I think the invocation by the academic officer, Mr. Uh, Bolier, uh, will come out, uh, in our midst, we have given a brief introduction of uh, NBSC. NBSC, uh, uh, he has not given uh, this thing, but uh, we were there under Assam Bor. Uh, prior to our statehood, we were one of the first few states which uh, actually got lots of independence uh, to frame our educational policy. So, uh, NBSC was formed in uh, 1974. It has been functioning, and uh, I think uh, in terms of best practices, we have come a long way. Uh, in place of Professor Indani Baduri, uh, Professor M. V. Srinivasan, thank you so much for uh, briefly giving us an idea. Uh, delegates from Northeast, uh, from Mizoram, Meghalaya, Sakim, Tripura, I will not go into the details. We also have uh, partnering uh, uh, representatives from the ETS, United States of America. Then we have the National Board, two are represented here, the ICSE and IOS. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, it's a brief respite from the heat of Delhi. So welcome to Bahima. It's a hamlet uh, town, a very small town. So please enjoy your stay here also. Uh, I also uh, thank the media for making their presence here. Uh, we all know that we belong to a community which gives certificates to people. You see, we are people who constantly greet people. So I know uh, we have a long day ahead, not only just a, a long day ahead, uh, but uh, four days. Parag was formed, and I uh, confer with uh, Professor Srinivasan. Uh, he told me that uh, it is now fu fully functional. Uh, the performance assessment review and analysis of knowledge for holistic development. Uh, a lot of structural reform is taking place currently uh, even under the system. So especially with the NEP, uh, we hope that India has been a civilizational experience of so many centuries. Uh, uh, I used to study uh, Natya Shastra. See? Uh, so uh, not just with uh, psychometrics, but also in other sectors, and we know that uh, especially vocationalization of education is one of the key components, uh, especially with this NP. So this is something which uh, I also want our uh, professors to take note. Uh, India is a diverse country for us, a small, uh, uh, 80 years ago we were just simply head hunting. Mm? Uh, <clears throat> uh, for us as a small state, I think we have come a long way. So. I'd like to speak briefly from the Nagaland Naga perspective. Uh, we have come a long way because uh, in terms of uh, NBSC, we have created uh, examination centers. And you know, we have not just 
teaching our young boys and girls, conducting exams. But we have topographical challenges like uh, the interior places, how do we conduct? So it's not just with the assessment, we are also faced with a lot of uh, structural challenges. So I think uh, these are. NBSC over the years has also formed its own mechanism, the clearing house mechanism. Uh, it's very effective, and we see in popular Hindi movies uh, people talking about uh, mass copying this and that. And I think uh, Nagaland, we are proud to say that uh, we have very effectively, and also it also ties with our what we call uh, our community sense. Uh, 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 mass copying, this are something which uh, inherently, I mean, as a society, we do not really encourage. So I think uh, all these best practices uh, are something which we can do better. So from the Naga perspective. It is a huge challenge to say that you can learn something from Nagas. Because India, given its diversity, you have like the 2000 plus years of civilization. And it's not just India, but we have been exporting our what we call uh, uh, education, not just education vis a vis uh, religion also, uh, to our neighboring uh, countries. So today, if you look at uh, India, thanks to the NCRT, uh, last month I attended the 58th. NCRT uh, general uh, meeting. I highlighted there also uh, NCRT as what we call uh, the parent body. It has been fostering a lot of growth. And uh, if you look at uh, the overall India, uh, we see that many of our teachers who are in the uh, education field, they all go through a very rigorous, robust system. Our teachers are very qualified. So if we vis a vis compare ourselves as uh, 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 what do we call uh, a global partner. I think uh, we have a long way to go, I think, in terms of uh, comparing with uh, uh, developing countries. I think India, as a global leader in uh, what do we call uh, in education sector, we have a robust system, and I think this is one area where NCRT should have its global footprints all over the world. Take the instance of what do we call Brazil as a developing country. They are still struggling with uh, uh, what do we call uh, educating there. What we will find their teachers to teach in the classroom. So I think India has, thanks to our national uh, institutions, we have gone a long way. So this kindest act of coming to Kohima, calling all the regional partners, uh, our sister organizations, gathering us here in Kohima, this kind act, I would like to congratulate the NCRT for taking this initiative. We are in the far flung, uh, we are in the easternmost, but thanks to all of you. You have taken your time out to come and actually be with us. So with that, uh, I welcome all of you. It's a long way to go, but we also hope that you will also learn from us. Just three quick points. First is the NEP, especially for a multi-diverse linguistic uh, state like Nagaland. It becomes a little bit impossible for us to identify which language, especially in urban areas. So if it is in the village, of course, we can stick with the local language. We have like uh, more than uh, 20 plus linguistic uh, categories here. Uh, if you go to the interiors, it's much more. But this is one challenge where uh, we are facing. <coughs> the second one is I highlighted during the 58th uh, NCR meeting also. Uh, we know that India has been exporting its education. We have been very liberal uh, uh, from very far countries uh, during the uh, uh, well, ancient times. People come and we freely give our what we call knowledge systems to other people. Likewise, uh, many states in India are in no position to actually saw uh, our uh, 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 Professor Serena Barton has already spoken uh, highlighted. Uh, it becomes difficult for us to conform. So likewise, we have been taking the NCRT textbooks. So uh, we have been asking whether we can liberalize a little bit. There is a lot of doorkeepers in the form of distributor. So if we can have an open access policy, where state can mobilize its resources to print, you see, because education should be free, and especially today here we are talking about access. And uh, I think India as a very liberal-minded country, NCRD particularly, should be more open to that idea of so to share knowledge. Lastly, when it comes to vocationalization, you see, we have a list of uh, 10. Vocationalization is something which uh, structurally the state, our school is also struggling because uh, it also uh, 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 imply uh, putting up teachers now. It has expenditures on the state. Uh, we will have to reconfigure it. Uh, earlier we were thinking we will drop some of those, but now we are in the process of restructuring to meet the uh, needs of national education policy. So when it comes to diversity of 
uh, for example, Parag has come out with uh, what do you call market linkages with the uh, unified laboratory network. So likewise, we have not introduced, but simple things like packaging, which we can teach, like uh, how do we export our things to the rest of the country. We should test our pineapples one of these days. I'm sure they are making arrangement. The sweetest pineapples uh, all over India they are found here. So things like uh, market linkages to do with livelihood, we would like to. And also we have what do we call uh, 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 indigenous practices like uh, what do we call uh, uh, use of cane, cane works, you see, uh, neat team. So we would like to, so I would also like to request and also ask the uh, uh, people here, uh, you are all masters in the home field, to also take cognizance of that uh, there is diversity of uh, vocationalization. So we will appreciate if you can also take note of that. With this, I will come each and every one of you. You have a great time. Thank you. To all the delegates from the various states and from the two national board also. We would like to thank the media also for covering the program. Uh, to all the delegates from the various states and from the two national board also. We would like to thank the media also for covering the program. To Nagaland TV, Sop Manulaga Awas. Watch us live on Geo TV and on your television sets as well. For Dumapu viewers, we are on channel number 994 in Global Chapter. And Kohima and Mokokchong viewers, switch to channel number 138 on Hornbill Digital. For all news and updates, follow us on Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, and Twitter.